It ain't nothing but house music. House music shall never die. This is the True House Feelings Review Crew with Walter Ford and Maroy. Um, yeah, welcome today uh, to a special uh, True House Feelings Review Crew. Uh, this time I have a special guest. It's Cole Lawton! <laughs> yeah! Hello. All the way from England. Uh, yeah! I uh, know you from, I think, uh, Famous Music. I don't know for sure. Is it Famous uh, Music? Famous, um, I think, was the original year back maybe two, three years yeah, ago. Yeah, three Vamos. years, I think. Yeah, I and, think so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We always uh, keep in touch and, and yeah, sending yeah. stuff. I, I really like what you're doing. Well, uh, first of all, where are you from? Sure. So, obviously, if anyone knows dodgy accents, this is a Geordie <laughs> Newcastle UK accent. Yeah. So, yes, I'm from, I'm from the northeast of England, which is right. right at the top, in the right hand corner, normally very cold, right. but actually, people who come from Newcastle are the most friendliest people you'll ever meet. So we're in good, we're in good spirits. Okay, okay, cool, <laughs> good to uh, good to hear. Uh, I've never been in England uh, um, before. Oh, well, no, well no, no, I've been one time in England in London. So is yeah. is that is that England? Is yeah. it like Amsterdam for for the for the Dutch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been in Holland yeah, in Amsterdam. <laughs> That's not Holland, but okay. Nah, nah. <laughs> true, true. Uh, so yeah, uh, where, uh, yeah, you did grow up there also. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm from a place called uh, South Shields, which is uh, on the coast. So I'm okay. kind of like we have a name for people from uh, South Shields. We're called sand dancers. Yeah. So I'm classed as a sand dancer because I was born next to the sea and the sand. Oh, and nice. So, yeah, I, co I come from a, 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 an area which is swamped with football. So you usually know your football in Holland. So we're very uh, much the football culture in where I'm from. Okay, so, yeah. okay. You, you're watching uh, much of the football there? Uh, well, I'm a Newcastle United supporter, so it's not very oh. jolly good times with my football team at the minute. But, you know, I still follow England. Okay, like okay. Uh, uh, I don't follow any football, so no. you can tell me everything good for about you. it. Good yeah. for your life must be so much better without following football. <laughs> Ah uh, yeah, well, well, I'm a big basketball fan, so oh, really? the, okay. yeah, yeah, NBA fan. So NBA, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a bit nice. short for it, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, yeah. Um, when uh, when you grow up there, uh, was house always involved in your life or? Not, 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 not at all, mate, no. Um, I kind of like grew up in a culture where my sister was 10 years older than me and she kind of like introduced me into sort of like pop music, 80s music, right. you know, the uh, the jam and, you know, all that kind of era. Um, I didn't really find house music until uh, 2001. So it's quite late for me, really, for finding house music. I yeah. kind of went through all the 90s pop stuff with like Blur and Oasis and, you know, in that kind of scene and yeah, all that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. And house music was just like these crazy people who used to go clubbing all the time yeah. and dance to this music. I was yeah. never in that in that sort of scene. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, falling into that scene was, was, a, was a total eye-opener, really, for like discovering... Music, oh, music, yeah, it's totally different, yeah, yeah. It, it's a big in your area, or or always yeah, kind of you, for kind the bigger... of. In Newcastle has or used to have a really big scene of a club called the uh, Shindig, and that's kind of like was the super club in Newcastle. They're still there now, but back in the two thousands, yeah, that's where you kind of like your Roger Sanchez's and all the big oh, wow. big DJs would come, yeah, and then. Um, when I discovered that sort of scene, I mean, I was there every weekend after that, Walter, you know I mean? Queuing around the doors of getting into here, this house music, and uh, it never ended there. Like, all my friends will have now, all from the house scene, yeah. all from that club, and then yeah. we all have memories of that club. I think it went on for maybe about seven, eight years in that club, and then it closed and moved somewhere else, and things changed with the house scene in Newcastle. But between 2000 and 2008... The club right. and scene in Newcastle was huge. It was such a yeah. good, good vibe, you know, a good place to be. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and what kind of, um, you say, um, 
uh, what kind of house did you like the most? Is is it, uh, what you're making now, the deep stuff, or so, is... yeah, interestingly, when I fell into music, into house music, it was all about the big sort of defective DJs and that sound in the club. But then I went to Ibiza early 2000s yeah. and I went to Pasha for the first right. time. Okay, and I got to see uh, Miguel Migs play from uh, Naked Music Insulted. Okay. And that, completely changed me, me feeling and vibe around house music because I heard Deep House for the first proper time in that club all night and I just fell in love with it. I mean, like that's kind of like where my sound kind of like has came from, is from the mix and the naked music and the salted music and yeah. all that stuff that's kind of around now. Like, and I think all my flavours from the younger age to here in the club age, they then here in this deep house stuff, all just sort of comes together into this sort of cool sort of sound that I like putting out, you know. So it's yeah, the flavors really. Yeah, cool. Yeah, what I'm hearing in your sound is what you're saying. The the more Ibiza, chill, mm -hmm. soulful beach house yeah. kind of yeah. stuff. I really yeah. love it. Uh, we don't have it here either in in Holland. Uh, well, where. I'm from uh, where I am from. Uh, yeah. I am from a smaller town called Ada. You okay. probably be, never heard of it. <laughs> uh, and and in uh, I we didn't have a club scene. We have one discotheque, and right. that, that was it. But they playing the the top forty uh, stuff. Oh, and, really? And that okay. was it. So uh, that was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, um, yeah, what was your uh, biggest hero back then in uh, in 2001 to 2000? Yeah, again, Miguel, Miguel Miggs was, was for me, like, you know, uh, just the new, you know, he was putting out music uh, on Naked Music back in the day um, with Lisa Shaw, who would sing. Yeah. And it's just like, it was just amazing, the captivating noises and sounds that he was making were like way ahead of itself, I thought, with the the style, mm -hmm. you know, along, alongside that, you've got like Martin Emerson at jazz. He was around just coming through and, yeah. you know, putting his statement out for his sound, which who I'm friends with now, amazingly, like 20 years later, you're friends wow. with this guy whose music you love, you know? Um, nice. But yeah, just, just, just all, all that, all that groove back then was just, was just me. You know what I mean? I, I think cause like, I'm, I'm a more of an emotional attached person to music than just jump up and down and go crazy. Like, yeah. I will jump and down and go crazy, don't get me wrong, but I'm a bit old for that now. But <laughs> if there's something that's going to hit me in the heart and give me more emotion, yeah. that's the sound that really gets yeah. into, me skin, into me skin, you know, that's the bit. Yeah. You, 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 you're searching for the soul more. Searching for something I, that yeah. you're going to remember. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I get, I get that. And uh, is uh, Miguel Mix uh, your your hero as producer or as DJ? Yeah, I would say as producer. Um, my hero as a DJ is Mark Farina. So Farina oh, oh, right. from, from yeah. Mushroom Jazz. You yeah. know, again, been around for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've studied him many a time on YouTube. Watch okay. him mix. I kind of mix like him. I've caught, I've caught on to his style, and his yeah. style of music's really good as well. Like he takes you on a still that old school vibe. He'll take you on a journey when you go and watch him play. You know what I mean? He'll take you all different directions with a bit of jacking and a bit of deep and a bit of jazz. And he's just, uh, just, I just love the guy. And plus, he's obviously involved in multi music. So when he, he's still producing, putting music out with. Yeah. Um, with that label, you know, the tracks are always still fresh, you know, it still comes up with good ideas, which I, I take me half when some, when people have been in the business for like 30, 40 years and they're still sounding fresh and bringing out new ideas. It's like, we know ourselves, we've been doing it for how long we've been doing it. So yeah. to be able to keep, you know, re reinvigorating yourself, uh -huh. it's amazing, really. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, I'm always admired that uh, when DJs keep involving and, and mm. but staying a bit of true to the, yes. the, the real the sounds, uh, yeah, yeah. like the, the popular DJs, they are evolving, but they're going through other sounds yeah. and, and genres and stuff. And, and I'm yeah. always thinking like, yeah, yeah, are you doing this because you love it or is yeah. it? Yeah. And, and I think what you've got there is the key. Cause there's a lot of DJs who I used to like back in the day who are now yeah. right at the very top, but they play a, a total different style from what they used to play. I used to love 
yeah. because they've gone down that commercial avenue to make the pennies, which is great. But when I look at of someone course. like Mr. Mister Mark Farina, he's still doing the same thing, still yeah. underground, but super popular, yeah. still doing his thing in America, just stuck to what he's good at, you know, which is which take me out after people that, you know, amazing. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, when did you start with uh, your own productions? Yeah, um, so it was like late 2017 when I picked up um, the fact that I thought I'm going to give this making music a try. I kind of quit music for a few years. Yeah, you know. did you did you uh, start it as a DJ before? DJ first, yeah. All right, well, when did you start that? So yeah, going to the clubs and then, you know, going back to people's houses after clubbing and then seeing people spinning vinyl and records. It wasn't going to be long until I was thinking I need to get on them decks rather than sit on this chair. <laughs> so obviously going to the parties, I'm quite yeah. an, an addict when it comes to learning stuff. So I bought myself some decks, you know, and oh. I had no idea what I was doing. Records what, what, and stuff. What, what kind of decks did you so, buy? Like new, new mark belt drives, like that. Ooh, you just touch them and they were going all over the place. <laughs> But I had a good friend called Stu, who was an like amazing DJ. He taught us how to play, basically. He he was the one who gave us the patience to say, this is how you do it. But I think with music and vinyl is, you can kind of like teach someone how to play, but you can't teach someone how to feel it. And it's the feeling bit that makes you the person that you are. And that, that's that been in me anyway for music all my life. Yeah. So once I caught onto the feeling part, everything slotted into place. And uh, I, just, I just love playing vinyl. Vinyl was my thing, you know what I mean? Like spending money on vinyl, going and find it in the shop on a Saturday. Yeah. Looking at all the covers, you know, all that kind of stuff was 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 part and parcel of falling in love with music, to be honest. Yeah. Like, the vinyl yeah. collection. Yeah. Cool. And then in two, uh, you, you quit for, for a while? Quit, yeah. Uh, kind of like yeah, got sick of trying to play in around my area, never really getting into the club scene, like playing-wise. Having yeah. a little bit of luck here, there and everywhere. Um, son was born, family, things change, you know, me and all them other bits and pieces, you know, yeah. as you tell me, through life, things, things come about. L life then, caught up. <laughs> yeah, and I thought I was done, to be honest. I thought I'd put out of bed, you know what I mean? Like, I'd give it a shot. And uh, yeah. one of my friends asked us to just play at a, at a night in a, a gliding club in the top of Newcastle, like a warehouse event I hadn't played for years. She said, come on, just one more time, you know what I mean? Just come and have a play. Yeah, and uh, I played, and, and it just you know it's like the bug just bump gets you straight away. I was just instantly thinking, oh man, I've missed this. You know, what I mean, I need to like I need to get back into playing music. But the difference was this time, what like I'm a kind of like person who thinks I'll never do something again that doesn't work. So I thought, what's the point in doing exactly what I just did for ten years, just playing in clubs and stuff and bars? It's just going to be exactly the same again. So I'm going to have to do something different and learn. Yeah. Produce music was the thing I thought. That's the one thing I've never tried. Yeah. I need to try this instead. Okay. And it's things have took off since then. So it's been. Okay. So in 2017, you you started. Uh, yeah. With which dog did you start? Yeah, I bought uh, Fruity Loops. So Fruity I Loops. Sell some FLI because I just thought. I'm not going to throw money at this, right? Because I've no idea if I can do it. <laughs> for one. First, just learn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The second part is me wife would kill us if I spent a load of money and I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then the third one is I'm actually clever enough to learn how to do this. So I'm thinking, yeah. I have no idea how to make music. Yeah. I've seen my friend make music a, a few years previous, and I must admit, he terrified us. He was on Ableton and he was pressing all the buttons. He was brilliant, you know, and I'm sitting there thinking, I'm not clever enough to learn this. What I'm not going to college. Yeah. What is this? What does that do? I've got, what's, what's a reverb and a phaser? What? The, what? So yeah. anyway, so yeah, it gets the... Uh, but it's in theme. English, so it's it's easier for you than for me. But all YouTube, man, YouTube yeah, was the winner. Right. Just yeah. to do it. Yeah. But anyway, my first track, I can tell you, was 12 minutes long, completely balls it up. Oh, it lovely. Diamonds out, out the window. I'm like, this, is a lot. <laughs> this is a long track. What's going on? Yeah. But anyway, after knuck knuckling down and slowly getting used to it, I've kind of like found a formula now and I've got good people around us. I've met good people. Who I've, I've made loads of mistakes, you know what I mean? Craig, like multiple mistakes, but then I've Everybody. learned from them, uh, from it every single time. Yeah. And yeah. I speak to good people and I get good advice on music, and let, give his tips. And when someone tells me something, I, I take it all in, you know what I mean? I'm really good at, especially labels. If I send the stuff to labels and they're knocking me back and stuff, I'm always saying like, is there a reason? Tell me something I can change. Yeah. Just give us something so I can learn yeah. from it, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's yeah. a journey, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, 
open for learning so mm. it is yeah good to hear man 2017 then you are now f five yeah. years coming up five year, me five year plan yeah five All year right. plan coming okay. to an end okay okay <laughs> nice hey uh what was your biggest fear when you started this journey um or, or had you any fear not really i just kind of i had a goal when I started doing it. Right. And the one goal I wanted to do was to get on solid music with yeah. my own mix. If yeah. I, I always just thought if I, if I can get the nod from the main man that I've made something good enough to go on solid, which my mates would all be like, wow, we've all yeah. been, we've all just had 20 years of listening to this music and falling in love with it, you know, and then, then there's me like on the same label that we were, we were in love with. That was my dream. That was the one bit of focus, you know what I mean, to, to, cool. to keep me going. Cool. So, yeah, but never know, no fears around it, really. It's just the fact no, that no, no. frustrations, really, because I wanted to do something, wanted to make something that, I'm like, you know, it's in you, you know what I mean? Think, oh, I just want to make this music. I want to yeah, do it. yeah. yeah. Um, uh, 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 getting back to the door, you're still uh, producing in Fruity Loops? Still, still on FL. So I'm trying to should move across the logic at the minute. Oh, there's logic. A bit of a, oh, right. There's a bit of transition going on because of uh, Wes from Deep Fix. He's like introducing us to the new world of like, he's like Mr. Technology. And I'm like, one fruity loops, leave me alone. So yeah, I'm kind of. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the crazy thing is everybody's saying fruity loops is the most, most it's, it's one of the easier programs. Yeah, it really I is can't. I can't work with it. Um, no? no, no. I started with Reason. I don't oh, yeah. know if you know it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of the hardest, I think. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I learned there the, the basics, just the basic yeah. stuff and how things do uh, going. And then I switched to Ableton. And yeah. that was an eye opener for me, and that was so freaking easy. Ableton, so easy oh, to, really? to handle. Easy. Yeah. yeah, and um, I did one uh, two times. I want to try out Fruity Loops, and yeah, I, I, no, it's no. funny because I'm the other way. You see, because I seen my friend on Ableton years ago, and I think that scared us. So when I went to buy something. I probably could have bought Ableton and thought because I've seen yeah. it already. Yeah. Let's just give it a try. But I just looked for something like, you know, looking at something that's just simple, easy. Let's see if I can just learn the basics. And yeah. Obviously that was what, what came up, you know. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't matter. You make great music. So it doesn't matter where it comes from. Uh, let me see. Um, yeah, uh, when you're starting uh, with a track, what is your thinking process? I, is there a process? Or is <laughs> it yeah, it's funny. I have a, <laughs> someone asked me this the other day. Just yeah. on, a, on a message, just randomly says, how come your workflow is so fast? Like, what do you do with your workflow? And I kind of I have this 70-30 thing, which I work on, all right, where I always make a track probably... 70% finished yeah. because I think yeah, I think a lot of people get stuck trying to make 100% and I always feel 100% is not achievable all right but yeah. I can do 70 all right and then I think the 30% comes a master and your mix down can add them extra percents that get you yeah. to yeah, a level yeah, yeah, yeah. where you're you're happy for it to be to be out so my method is I kind of make loads of 32 beat tracks if I'm honest so I'll kind of like find samples I'll find ideas yeah, I'll find beats, yeah. and then I'll put them together in a little 32 beat track, and then I'll put it in a file, and then I'll make another one, and then I'll put it in a file, and I'll make another one. So I'll make probably about 10, 15 mini tracks a month. Yeah, and then I slowly kind of like jump from mini track to mini track every day, maybe 30 minutes, maybe three hours, maybe 20 minutes, just adding adding ideas, coming up with more stuff. And then within time, you kind of like have these bundle of tracks now that are just about ready. And then normally I could sit in the day and just like finish, 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 put more in, come up with that one needs vocals. Let's send that off to a vocalist. Let's add that in. And I think because I have this rotation when I have that running all the time, I'm always running on like 15, 20 tracks really that I'm working on all the time. All right. And that's okay. been going on for quite, for like maybe two years now. So you can see why we work for yeah yeah pretty pretty fast and plus when remixes come in it's very handy as well because you can drop 
stems into the mini tracks yeah. and make them into tracks. So yeah. it's sort of like a good little way of. Sort so of uh, if I'm. Um don't know the English the English phrase right now, but if I'm hearing it right, uh, understand it. Uh, so you're making uh, little loops, and yep. from that you're making the track. Yep. Yeah. All right. Oh, cool. Very, very nice. Um, because yeah, we were talking before, and I was saying like. I was always thinking like people saying to me like, oh, you make so many tracks so fast. Yeah, I'm just mm. pushing, pushing, but you are completely. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm thinking like you, mm. you did uh, last week, you did three tracks yeah. and now I four it. tracks. I read, what the hell? I read an interview, I read a Seb Junior's interview uh, last year and he was making two tracks a day. Like wow. when, he was, when he was at the point of like trying to get get his music out, and I just yeah. thought that's, I'm in the same place as him. But like, he, he slowed down now, and he's thinking, still, you know, like I would get one done, and I'll move on to another track straight away. And that was me, maybe like a year and a half ago. So like, I've got yeah. to get another one, another little, little, little. But this year, I've kind of like I've slowed down over the last yeah. couple of months because I've got an yeah. album coming. Well, I'm still sort of like ticking away and making little ideas and stuff. But I think but just to get that momentum, you need to. You need to do that, you know? Yeah, but don't you think it's a little bit overkill? Probably. Uh, uh, sometimes I, I didn't keep up with your tracks. I was thinking yeah. like, oh, another one and another one. Uh, wow, yeah. what, uh, what, what's going on, you know? And, and you make such a good tracks, but sometimes it's it's um it's too much it's, it's yeah, too get, much i lost. think uh, i i don't know yeah, how, yeah, yeah. How, how other people think but i'm thinking um yeah so um we talked a little bit about the labels i heard uh salt yeah. music yes. uh i i think that's your favorite label yeah ever. definitely yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, cool. just just that that getting on that goal, you know. When I said about getting on salted, and this year I got on salted, you know, this is the year I achieved my goal, like which was amazing. Yeah, yeah, cool. And um, do you consider yourself more a producer or a DJ? Yeah, more of a producer now, if I'm honest. Like DJing is DJing. Don't get me wrong, I still love playing and DJing, but. I, I just like the different aspect of producing because I think DJing you can lose yourself into the mix and have uh -huh. fun with other people's music, but producing is more of a personal thing that you're yeah. doing for yourself and you, you're making something about you, you know, and how you feel. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, okay. So, producing has more um, personal feelings. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, uh, uh, you have a great um, uh, shirt on uh, with a nice uh, <laughs> circle. Me jump, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's from your own label. Uh, what can you tell about it? Um, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Deep, deep fix recordings. There. So this yeah. is the brainchild of uh, Wes Hall. Come on, I've got to mention Wes. Wes is the okay. man behind uh, Deep Fix. He approached us last year, but literally, like, we live a stone throw away from each other. All right. We, even know who, we, we never knew each other, but we just <laughs> found each other through music and connecting on Facebook, you know what I mean? Hey, Being local yeah. to each other. And then uh, as we get to chatting, he's telling us all his, his influence in music's, like, degree level. He's, like, supersonic technology man, you know what I mean? He, right. He's amazing. He's the proper yeah. producer in my eyes. Okay. And uh, he has this idea of uh, starting this label up. So... Yeah, I thought let's let's give it a go. But the difference be behind it was the, the the theory of the label is making a label that helps people fix the music. So we were kind of like in that place of how many times do we send labels to people? Sometimes they don't listen. Sometimes they listen, they don't reply. Sometimes you get a reply and they just say no, and there's no reason behind it. So we were kind of like saying we want Deep Fix to be like a, a like an A and R where we help people. So we, we talk to people personally when they yeah. send them. We we thank them. We we ask them about the music. You know, we ask them if they want it, if if they like it. We'll try and fix it a little bit more to make it fit right. You know what I mean? If it doesn't fit, we'll introduce them to other labels who we're friends yeah. with to say you know that might work over there. 
Uh, and it's just grown from there. I think we've had, we've got such a nice um, family now with people who are, who are involved yeah. with us because they can actually see that we're a genuine bunch of people, really, who are who are doing this label, and we actually want to help. Yeah, help the industry rather than hinder it. If you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. Uh, you do it with uh, Wes and Robbie. Yes, so yeah. Robbie is our, he's the, the face of, of the label, he's the right. funny, crazy blogger, he does all Yeah, yeah, things. he's a funny person, man. He's a funny, he's a DJ as well, he's a cracking DJ as well, yeah. I've been friends with Robbie for nearly 15 years now from the scene right. in Newcastle okay. and stuff, okay. you know what I mean, cool. so between the three, we, we've got like three very unique different styles and it all kind of blends in together well, the personalities and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, but, yeah. but that, I think that's the key. If you're yeah. all the same, it's it's not working. No, definitely not. And it's always the same. Uh, yeah, cool. So um, yeah, Deepfix. I uh, I had the pleasure to uh, do uh, an EP on it. I, I really loved it. Uh, yeah, it was a little bit out of my comfort zone. It was a bit yeah. deeper than I normally make, but I, I really loved it and get so much positive uh, energy from it. And the people are so positive about uh, the record label. Um, if you're looking at your uh, own record label, um, uh, what, what are the plans for now? Is it, is, is, you you getting bigger and bigger i uh, yeah i feel that i don't know if that's true but we're grown we're yeah. like a year we're a year old in may which is amazing we're, oh that's tw 12 months really which is serious i i thought really it was how... like already a year but yeah so it's kind of like that is like for what we've done in the first year is wow. way beyond what we thought we could achieve i mean like the 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 various artist stuff we put out, we put out some amazing albums. Yeah, the last one got I think number seventeen in the track source chart, which is a top twenty album on track source. Happy with that for a label for nice. the first year. Yeah, and then meeting yourself and great artists. I mean, everybody who's trusted with the music, we've we've promoted it the best we can. We've sent it to distribute as the best we can. We we'll just try our best for everybody. You know, I mean, to make sure that everything we do is like tip top. Like yeah. on the on the money for the producer to make sure yeah. that you get promoted the best yourself you can, you know. Um, but we've got so many ideas, mate. We've got no idea. Well, we get around the table. I mean, like COVID has kind of like slowed us down a little bit. Yeah. But yeah. That's gonna change very soon. So you will be doing this with Robbie very soon, my friend. You'll be getting interviewed about you and the label and yeah. you know, uh, nice, starting nice. up this TV channel and the blogs and everything. So we just we just yeah. wanna kinda like for the label, I think there's so many labels that it's just a label and you don't know the producer behind the label. You see uh -huh. the release the music, but you don't actually get to know the person. No. We want to really be a label that's for the people. So we want you to be the face of the label. So when someone puts something out, we're promoting you, like we're interviewing you, we're putting your blogs out. We're just it's like a full package of like support for people. Yeah, yeah. For for the love of the music. Hmm. For the music, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that was the feeling what I get um when I first met you and we, we talked on uh, Facebook. I was like, damn, th this guy is different than the other producers and label owners. And you yeah. you reply and, and you do your best, you know. I was yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a little bit ago when you replied something to me in Dutch and I was Dutch, like yeah. Whoa! <laughs> Hello. Oh, it's Google Translate. I don't care. Wow, nice. Yeah. You know, uh, that, cool. that's our things that uh, no no other label or or producer do that for you, and and, and yeah. that's really cool. Really cool. Yeah. Uh, right, uh, you sent me three tracks. Um, yes. I want to talk about it. Um, the first one, it's uh, it's okay. From uh, Jesse Saunders, you yep. say that right? And yeah, uh, yeah. in your remix, uh, what can you tell about it? Uh, oh, this is the, the, the biggest remix I've ever done. This one, Jesse's. So Jesse Jesse Saunders is like the originator of house music from Chicago. Yeah. So like back in 1984, he was the first person to have um, a house track on vinyl. 
Yeah. And it was called On and On, you know, back in the day. That was kind of like the start of vinyl going into the clubs in Chicago, you know, and the house scene starting. So, you know what I mean? Like 20 or 30 odd years later, and I'm now classing myself as a friend with Jesse Saunders, who we talk to regular every day. It's like mind blowing for somebody from yourself. From, yeah, yeah. From Newcastle, from nothing, to like <laughs> then be part of this legend, who's yeah. the original house music. And then he asked me to, to do a remix for the 35th anniversary of um, It's OK, which was out wow. in 1986. So it's 35 years since that one, that track came out. Um, I jumped at the chance to do it. But when I started doing it, I was like, I can't do this. This is too hard. Like trying to remix an 80s track is noisy. Like you, you know, the sounds are so different. You know that yeah. everything's very, very computerized and digital and very, mm -hmm. very different sounding what we got now. So it kind of like took a little bit of time. I nearly quit a few times thinking, nah, can't do it. But then uh, I changed the bass line into a synth. Uh, things yeah. slotted into place. I found what I wanted to do with it. Yeah. Uh, all came together really nice. Sent it off to the great man. He came back and said, "Love it." And then he put it as the lead track on on, on the on wow. the EP, which was like a proper wow. nod, you know, of like yeah, well, that, that, so that, that's a big honor. Yeah, big honor. Yeah. Uh, what I was uh, writing about it uh, when I uh, listened to it, um, the synths in the in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, are yeah. they the originals or yeah? So it's original, so yeah. I really love that riff. I, I love it. Yeah. So that what was the original baseline, believe it or not? And I turned it into a synth. That, that, that's what nice. the hook of the track is. Yeah. Nice, nice. I really love that. Uh, the the piano chords are they from the original also, or no. did you play so them? All, all mine, like some nice. the cushion in there is obviously yeah. the uh, Jesse stuff, and then obviously Jesse's vocal. Saying it's okay. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I I really love the piano chords. They were yeah. really complimenting the track uh, for me. Uh, yeah, and it, it, it grooves, and that's the yes. thing in uh, in the True House Feelings uh, review group. <laughs> when it grooves, we are happy, man. <laughs> we are happy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's uh, that's it's okay, uh, Jesse Saunders. Yeah, thanks. Uh, the next one. Um, that's a really special one for you, yeah. uh, I heard. Uh, it called Fighter by yep. you. And yeah. on which label is it? And what's the, the story yes. behind? So Fighter is the, the dream release. It's on Solid Music. Yeah. It came out this year. It took 12 months to come out, mind. Cool. And obviously the, the, the waiting time of getting out on Salt had been such a big label. Yeah. But I can tell you, I tell you 12 months ago when the email came saying that, oh, we want to take this AP. I mean, like I've never danced around the house. I was like back 21 year old again, doing a jive. It was like such a good feeling. <laughs> of like knowing you've achieved the goal, like you've yeah. set out to do music. Just thinking, this is unbelievable. I've actually managed to do the one thing I wanted to do. Yeah. But the speciality around the track is it was made Obviously, it's called Fighter. My son, you know, he's born with uh, health problems, and quite a lot of my music comes from the last seven years of kind of like different feelings and thoughts from my son, and him having to deal with health problems and operations in hospital, and you know, me and my wife and the struggles that we've been through, yeah. and our worry and fears, you know, yeah. quite a lot. It's been which is fed into my music, to be honest. Like that's kind of give us quite a lot of good ideas for me feelings and music but anyway fighter is just to, just to say thanks to my son for fighting you know like i want him to know that songs about him when he gets older and yeah I've got it on vinyl i've had it printed you know so yeah like, i see it in the background it's all there oh, mate, yeah, all man. Printed and stuff so um, that's for him that's just me saying to him there you go son you know that, yeah. that was for you you know which is nice nice man how, how is it now with your son He's doing great, mate. Yeah. yeah. He's, uh, he's seven and he's just running around like a madman, as usual. Yeah, yeah. And and, and making beats. <laughs> making Harry, beats, yes. Harry, Harry. beats. Yeah, this one's Harry's beat. That's Harry's yeah. Beat, yeah. Cool, yeah, man. We've just, uh, we've got Harry's Funky Beat, which is signed to Solid Music as well. That's coming out in the summer. So we've made wow. a new Wow, 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 wow. It's, just, you uh, it's nice, I'm, I'm introducing him into, into my world with music. You know, he, he loves yeah, it. Like, cool. so. Yeah, he it's likes cool. it. You yeah. don't have to push him. Push that button. <laughs> nah. nah. Straight in. Straight in. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Uh, what I really liked uh, about that um, track uh, were the hi-hats, the hi-hats mm. pattern. It's, it's, it's 
yeah uh, a bit jazzy like yeah yeah I really love that the percussion was cool um, yeah there, there is a bell synth I think in the yeah. background somewhere yeah yeah wow that one yeah the, it's beautiful it's like a lovely yeah. off which just flows through the track uh, and I think that's like yeah that's the hoot on it like it's lush yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah and um, uh, with the message behind the, the, the track really uh, lifts it up and um, what's really hitting me was the break yeah it was like oh 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 something different yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. uh the your your um it's a kind of break beat pattern i yeah, think great beat. yeah 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 yeah, yeah that's the hip hoppy styles coming out there yeah <laughs> <laughs> nice nice uh and the next track it's uh in depth to you nah, it, yep. uh, it, you you don't uh, have depth to me but I really love it the way you do this yeah. for me. Um, what can you tell me about that? Yeah, not much of a story behind this one apart right. from it's uh, Ulm Records 100th release. So Ulm Records is another label who I, I, I was, I've been a fan on for, for a long, long time. Cool. Uh, and, and I got onto Ulm Records maybe about a year and a bit ago with uh, Richie Hartness who runs the label. Yeah. We've become good friends. I've released quite a lot of music since getting on that label. And uh, cool. when I said in this one, he told us he was going to give us the 100th release on his, on his label, which again, just honoured, you know great, what I mean? Great honour. Yeah. Just yeah, keep pinching yourself, you know, when little things like that happen, you just think that's so nice, you know, like, like someone's trusted you to be that person, to be that that release, you know. Yeah. Plus, it, it's a really nice track. I think it has like a, a sort of subtle uh, meaning is in I'm in debt with my wife because she gives us quite a lot of time to play my music and do what I want. So like, I know there's a secret little tale in there really. Ah, nice, <laughs> what the nice. bundles are all about because we are in debt with people who let us yeah. do what we do with music. <laughs> yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do love the tune, like the track. It's, it's such a lovely track as well. It's lovely. Yeah, nice. Uh, what I uh, was... Uh, hearing in the track, uh, nice chords again, uh, beach housey feelings, yeah. Uh, yeah. the vocal and the vocal delay, it's, yeah. it's the Cole Lawton signature. Yeah, got me signature with the delay on the vocals. You know? Yeah, you have a uh, kind of delay and I'm always hearing that in your tracks. You made a, yeah. a remix from my track, uh, Be Good. Yeah you know yeah. and yeah. and there's also the same delay uh, thing and and i was yeah. like oh, that's the signature yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's good, really good. a signature <laughs> um and um you have uh, many times in your tracks and a no silence part mm. in uh right before the drop and and yeah. i'm all, always like oh yeah call Alton. yeah 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 you, you um, most of the time you have that the the, the silent part the the, f the one bars well, yeah. not really silent but, but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Just wait when it resolves yeah. Yeah, yeah um oh yeah and one thing this is a personal thing your outros there is no outro <laughs> <laughs> it's just thank you very much goodbye <laughs> <laughs> no um, uh, you have always something going on till the yeah, last yeah. second there is yeah. no beats no clean no. beats with the bass no there's something no. going on uh, really love it but sometimes as a DJ it's sometimes yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Pain in the ass. Mix, <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm setting you a challenge. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah, gonna yeah. play me music. Yeah. <laughs> Loop it. <laughs> yeah. 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 No problem. Hey, uh, thank you for this interview. Do you have any news or something you wanna tell us? Or yeah, I just need, I need to promote my album because I've got yeah. an album coming. I never thought I would make an album. So this is cool. for me. This this is like. How me. many tracks on the album? Okay, so there's 11, 11 full tracks. Right. There's an intro, prelude, outro, and then there's a little sneaky bonus track on there as well for everybody Ooh. just to enjoy as well. So I've kind of like, um, with the team I'm working with, I've took it back to the olden days of making a proper album. It's like, it's an album that's kind of like, has a journey. It's got lots of feelings in it. I mean, like, I've even... Um, 
sampled my dad who died 10 years ago, his voice from a, wow. from, a from an anniversary party with my wife. So my dad's talking on it. So I've made it very personal. You know, there's a mm. lot of songs on there with all meanings for different people and people who I've met throughout the years. Um, and it's just really like deeply influenced music. It's not just house music. Okay. It's got a lot of, a lot of different Afro flavors. African stuff on there, you know, like really, I'm really proud of it. You know, I mean, I'm just thinking, well, yeah. I'm waiting for it to come back from the marsh, and it's coming. And I just kind of wait to sit and just go, ah, oh. cool. Some guest singers on there as well, some special guests on there who are, you know, very good at the game, what they're on playing that now, you know, so big names. Yeah. And uh, hopefully it's coming in June. We're just waiting, making okay. sure the date's all set and everything's right. And yeah, cool. it's coming. Uh, which label <laughs> it's coming? So this is interesting. It's kind of like with a fresh new label, but it's a person who we've met who's kind of like involved with Deep Fix. And yeah. they're involved with like other sort of, the other world of labels and rap labels and different right. distributions. So it's like a team effort. Yeah. So I can't say too much yet. So All right. again, it's sort of like, it's not just for track source. It's kind of like going down the realms of getting some good plays, you know, good streams on Spotify okay. and it's going to be oh, cool. a proper album, you know, so yeah, it's going to be different. Cool, cool, cool. And can we find you on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok? Yeah. What do we have more? Yeah, no TikTok. <laughs> don't do the TikTok. No. I have no idea how to do TikTok. I, I don't know. <laughs> I know, I couldn't have, that's for the youngins that I can't introduce that into my life. <laughs> for your son, <laughs> for your son. <laughs> but, uh, the normal Spotify, SoundCloud, yeah, yeah. Uh, Twitter, and all that stuff. It's yeah. all Cole Lawton, just Cole like... Lawton. yeah. Uh, well, I, I linked the, 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 the links below, so that's, that's no problem. Um, can we do an interview when your album is out? Oh, mate, I would love that. I'm trying to generate some... Uh, let's let's, do, that. Yeah, let's yeah, do that. Let's do it. Let's do that. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's the thing for in uh, June, July, uh, we, we yeah. met again and then we yeah. do that. Yeah, the last weekend of the month and we do a new uh, True House Feeling review crew and then i'm back with uh joram ma roy uh, see you then bye